as always, I always say to my brothers and sisters, the audience, those who are watching me, please, if you can, keep with you pen and paper. Why? Because you will keep writing these information notes, so that will be beneficial for you. So either if you have a pen and paper or you have your mobile with you and, and you keep writing the notes in it, that would be beneficial. Not because of me, not because of my lecture, but make this as a habit. Make it as a habit. Why? Because this, if you start doing this and writing every single thing that you will hear and a new knowledge that you will get or any knowledge that you will hear and listen and watch and you will write it down, this will make you amongst the tulab al-ilm or the one who is seeking knowledge. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who seeks the knowledge for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah and the angels and the inhabitants of the heaven and the inhabitants of the earth and even the ants in their holes and even the fishes in the oceans will make dua for the talib al-ilm, for the one who's seeking knowledge. So just imagine this uh, one hour less more uh, session uh, of, of this one one hour more or less you might write maybe four five six points some of the information that will make you to be among those who Allah and the angels and the inhabitants of all the heavens and the inhabitants that means all the inhabitants of the earth means uh, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created not only that even the smallest you know, insect, the ants, there are millions of millions and trillions of them, they will also make dua for you. And not only that, the fishes in the ocean, how many trillion they are, all these makhluqat, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will make dua for you. And top of that, Allah is making dua for you. What you want more than that? So this is my advice every time, whenever I sit with my brothers and sisters in my uh, durus, in my places where I give talk, I always say try to write down the knowledge because it is very very important and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Number one, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now blessed us with a new hijri year, right? One hijri year has passed and another hijri year has come. And as a Muslim, as a clever Muslim, as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a Muslim is a clever Muslim. Al-Mu'min Fatin, the believer is always a smart believer. He should think that, okay, what I did in my past year, did I please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did I did enough or did I do enough to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the previous year or no? And what is my plan in this year? What should I do in this year, Islamic year? Uh, how I will get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What I will do to improve myself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Improve, improving yourself within your own self with the dunya, that is also no problem. You improve yourself reading books and uh, getting courses and reading something and getting involved in a course or something. That is good. But what about, you know, the other half? This one half everyone is focusing on. Dunya, 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 right? What about akhirah? What about Allah? What about your iman? What about your taqwa? What about your grave? This is the other side of the, you know, haya. What about it? We have to keep balance. Otherwise, there will be, you know, disturbance in, in, in this balance because we have to keep everything in the middle. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We made you a balanced nation. So I cannot focus on dunya, dunya, dunya and forget about my akhirah, right? So we have to have balance. So now, as a Muslim, as a believer, as a smart believer, as a clever believer, I have to think what I did in the previous year. How was my ibadah? How was my link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How was my dealing with, you know, people? How many times I, I fought with, with people and made them feel upset and bad? And how many times I got angry? How many times I was able to give charity? How many times I was... Uh, doing the good deeds and making extra nafil prayer and making extra voluntary fasting. You have to think about all that. You think now quickly, if I didn't do much about the good deeds, then inshallah, I will do it today. From today, I will start. If I was 
doing something bad, making people upset. Maybe I was transgressing to myself by doing sins and whatsoever. And what's then? No, no, no. I have to reduce and reduce until inshallah ta'ala the time will come that I'm, I'm not doing it. But at, at least I will reduce and I will inshallah not do it. This is a believer. This is a believer who always think like that. So this is about the uh, new Hijri year that we are now stepping in. Alhamdulillah, we started, right? Tayyip. Now, what about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? about the migration of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, long story short, everyone knows that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he migrated from Mecca to Medina, right? Why he migrated? Because it was very difficult for him to live there. It was, he was, you know, uh, harassed. He was uh, uh, mocked. He was, you know, even, you know, uh, put in a difficult time. Not only him, even the Muslims were facing difficult time. Muslim at that time, cannot be a Muslim or cannot declare to be a Muslim. Why? Because he will be boycott. If you are selling, no one will buy from you. If you want to buy and you go to a person and he is saying that you are a Muslim, he will not sell it to you. It was very difficult for Muslims to live at that time of Mecca and at the time of uh, beginning of Islam. And subhanAllah, and this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, with the meaning of the hadith, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاءِ Islam started as something strange, and it will return back as something strange, so give glad tidings to the strangers. So this also comes here, because now if you want to hold upon your deen, people will call you terrorist. If you want to hold about you, uh, you know, uh, upon your deen and wearing hijab, people will call you oppressed. If you want to hold upon your deen and not get into haram relationship, people will call you, you are backwards. If you are holding upon your deen and don't agree with the, what the community are doing from drinking and having boyfriends and girlfriends and dealing with LGBTQ, XYZ, whatever that thing called and whatsoever if you don't agree with that and you hold upon your values you hold, hold upon your quran and you hold upon the teachings of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will be a stranger i will be a stranger all these muslims and mu'mins and those who are following the quran sunnah they will be strangers they will laugh at you they will mock at you they will make fun of you why because you are following the right path and this is what exactly happened with the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam right those who are following islam those who are following the sunnah those who are following the footsteps those who are believing in one god and completely denying the 360 gods around the kaaba you know people used to mock at them people used to laugh at them people used to make fun of them people used to humiliate them and some of the masters you know torture their slaves some of the big people used to torture the weak people and this is exactly what happening right now and it will happen more and more in next five years and 10 years and 20 years the more time is passing the more it is difficult and difficult and difficult what you have to do now i gave you the scenario right but what is the solution of this scenario the solution is what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did and this is what we learned from the hijrah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in one hour covering all these four points and talking about every single thing with detail, it might take a long time, two, three, four hours, and we have limited time. So I'm just giving you the main points that inshallah ta'ala will benefit you and us ta'ala, and we'll take the you know, faida from it, we'll, take, we'll extract the benefit from all these points. So now we are having almost a similar situation in, in around the world, around the world, maybe some of the countries, Alhamdulillah, still we are saved. For example, here we are in a blessed country that Alhamdulillah, you can practice your deen, you can do a lot of other things, Alhamdulillah, but still in, in around the world, even surrounded uh, countries and whatsoever, it is not that easy, right? Haram is spreading everywhere. Haram is spreading even here. Haram is spreading, you know, in, in our neighborhood. So how you protect yourself and what should you do and how you will deal, you know, when, when the khabath, when the sins and the sinful things increasing around you, what should you do? And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when it was difficult for him to live in Mecca, when it was difficult for Muslims to live in Mecca, when it was difficult for the Muslim community to deal in Mecca, uh, no buying, no selling, nothing, boycotting, uh, not even talking to the Muslims, not even uh, dealing with uh, any of the Muslims. What happened? The time came now to go and migrate to another place. And this is what 
you know, we advise that, you know, you should go where your Iman is now will get more stronger. You can practice your deen easily. You can wear your hijab properly. You can dress up and, and wear your abaya and cover your body properly, not in a place that people are walking at you and laughing at you and making fun of you. And just because of the people, you start leaving and giving up your values and your you know principles so some people unfortunately i know that they start removing their niqab they start with the niqab so whenever they go in xyz place in one of the countries they remove their niqab this is the first thing and then after some time they remove their abaya and they start wearing okay loose clothes but they they remove their abaya Okay, why? Because the community and the society and people looking at us and people living here, they are the redneck people and these people are so extreme and these people, they are Islamophobic. Okay, it's their problem. Why I have to remove my identity? Why I have to give up my identity because of these people? So this now person starts removing the uh, niqab first and then the uh, hijab, uh, then the abaya and then the time comes after some time, then the hijab start transforming into colorful hijab and the flourish hijab and then it transformed into that you know that little bit hair is coming out of the hijab and then uh, makeup start uh, coming on on the face and then all the way it took like a year or two or three until the hijab is gone completely why i have to and you have to and we have to give up our values and principles because of these people the people will not you know uh, will will be satisfied at any condition with Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودَ وَلَا النَّصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Yehud and Nasara, the Jews and Christians, they will never ever be satisfied with you as a Muslim, with me as a Muslim, with the entire Muslim Ummah, why? Unless you follow them, unless you follow their way and their style and their you know rules and conditions. And this is what exactly they want, right? They made this uh, the most horrible thing and sinful act that, uh, you know, people of Lut used to do. They made it lawful, right? It's halal for them. And, and they made it lawful. And it is now by the law. If you say anything wrong, you will be jailed and you will be put into a problem and travel ban. And uh, they will put you here and there and whatsoever just because you said the truth. Imagine this is the time that we are living in. So what you should do? what the Prophet ﷺ did and what you should do, what the Sahaba did from the sacrifices like Abu Bakr, he sacrificed for his complete wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Umar ibn Khattab did, he gave half of his wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Just because of deen, just because of Allah, just because of holding upon the identity. This is what we should do when it comes to the deen, when it comes to the principle, when it comes to the aqidah. So this is what happened. The Prophet ﷺ, after facing a difficult time in Mecca, Muslims finding difficult time in Mecca and boycotting and no transaction and nothing. Then what happened? The Prophet ﷺ agreed that he will migrate. So he started telling the Muslims that now you go in Medina, group by group, troop by troop, you know, uh, dele delegation by delegation whatsoever. Go and establish in Mecca and we will come at the end. So Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ said, till the end, everyone left except Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr. They were in Mecca and everyone knows now, khalas, that, you know, of course, they are realizing that, you know, okay, this family has left and this family has left and this family has left. So obviously they are realizing that the people leaving Mecca and going to Medina and obviously they know that Medina is almost as a Muslim, uh, you know, place and uh, everyone is Muslim there and all the Muslims are migrating there. So they said, okay, you know what? Let everyone go. We will not leave Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we will kill him. So what this is what happened. Abu Bakr and Umar, they were inside uh, in a place and outside there are many, many kuffar standing behind the houses and behind the walls waiting for Abu, ba for Abu, uh, for Abu Bakr and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come. So they will go and, and start hitting them from their swords and kill them. But what happened? It is the qadr of Allah that Allah instructed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that just take a sand, just take a sand and throw it. Like, what is the sand? Th that much, that much of sand, handful of sand and throw it in the air this is 
your duty, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You do it and it's my duty to make you come out all the way, walk through these people who are standing behind the walls and behind the houses in different places and I will make you. And this is what happened. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took the sand and threw it on the, you know, air. Logically, it goes up and comes down, right? But by that, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made the complete Mecca full of dust. Full of dust. They couldn't see anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr to move now. So they start moving and walking between these people, those who are having swords and they cannot see and they are looking like this and that. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walking normally in front of them and everyone is holding their swords and looking left and right and they cannot see. All the way when they went outside the Mecca. Long story until they reached to a place called Ghar uh, Thor where the Prophet ﷺ went inside and uh, hide himself and, and rested for some time. And Abu Bakr, he gave whatever he, he could to Prophet ﷺ. He made him to go inside and he then start putting his clothes, Abu Bakr, he started putting his clothes, his amama, his turban and everywhere in small holes inside the cave. Why? Because obviously they have scorpions, they have uh, uh, snakes, they have these, you know, uh, things inside the cave, obviously. So he started putting everywhere the the clothes and the, uh, you know, uh, his, his turban and whatever he's having. After that, still he found some holes inside. So what he did, he put his one leg at this time, at, at this place and another leg at that place. And not only that, he started putting his hand here. Imagine, so after putting all the clothes that he's having, he start putting his leg at this side and leg at that side and one hand here and the other hand here. And then he says, Ya Rasulullah, I want you to just lay down on my, on my thigh. Lay down and put your head on my thigh so you will have some rest and I will, I will take care of you. I will take care of, of you from any of the insects and any of the enemies come from outside. Now, while this is happening after some time, one of the insects, it could be a scorpion, it could be a snake, it could be anything, bit Abu Bakr in his leg where he was putting his leg. And Abu Bakr, imagine the love of Abu Bakr to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That bite of that insect or that specific uh, snake or scorpion made him into pain but he holds himself, he holds his mouth, he closes his mouth and he does not want to say even ah, even a word, even, you know, I say anything and he is holding upon himself. He's holding upon himself. He says, I want my Prophet Sallallahu I want my companion. I want Rasulullah to have some rest. So this is what exactly happened. He, he hold and he couldn't, he couldn't uh, take it anymore. So the tears start coming out from his eyes. Because obviously he cannot shout, he cannot scream, he cannot do anything. He's holding upon his tongue, he's, he's biting his lips. But after that, he couldn't take it. So the, you know, tears start coming from the eyes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Until the eyes, until the tears went all the way from the eyes to the beard, until from the beard start dripping down that much he was crying not one tear or another tear or two tears no it was coming why because it was a pain it is a pain it is it is a poison bite from a scorpion or from a snake or whatsoever so that pain made him cry a lot until his beard become wet and that wetness start falling down and who is down at the lap of Rasulullah, at the, at the lap of Abu Bakr, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when that thing started dripping on, on Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and Abu Bakr is now crying. So Abu, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up quickly and he says, Ma bika ya Rasulullah? So he said, Ludikht, uh, Ma bika ya Abu Bakr? What's wrong with you, Abu Bakr? So he replied, Ludikhtu ya Rasulullah that I have been bitten, Ya Rasulullah, by one of the things. So he said, show me, show me. The Prophet ﷺ said, show me. And he showed him. So the Prophet ﷺ took his saliva and put it on top of that bite. And he put his hand and start making dua. And when he removed his hand, that place was completely fine and healed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they left and continued 
later on, of course, the long story says that, you know, uh, the Kuffar Quraysh reached at that Mount Thor or Ghar Thor, uh, where the Prophet ﷺ is there. But by the will of Allah, they couldn't see him. And this was the yaqeen of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Abu Bakr, don't worry. Because Abu Bakr was very worried. Why? Because there was a man walking next to that small hole where the Abu Bakr and uh, when Abu Bakr and Rasulullah inside, and the man is walking, and Abu Bakr now nervous. He's not. He's not afraid of himself. He is afraid, and he is worried about Prophet So when the, uh, Rasulullah saw Abu Bakr is worried and so stressful, he says, "Ma bika ya Abu Bakr? What's wrong with you, Abu Bakr?" He says, "Ya Rasulullah, if this guy by mistake looked." look down at his at his foot or at his slipper he will be able to see us so look at the yaqeen look at the iman and this is what we want in our life look at the reply of rasulullah he said to abu bakr ya abu bakr ma dhannaka bi ithnayn allahu thalithuhuma what you think about two when allah is the third of them what about you think about us two when allah is you know third of us allah is with us means allah is protecting them allah is with them allah is blessing them and have mercy on them and Allah will protect them. So don't worry Abu Bakr, Allah is with us. Don't worry. We are two, but we have the third one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry. And this is exactly what happened. Then these people went down, they couldn't find Abu Bakr and Prophet and Abu Bakr and Rasul went all the way to Medina. Just a clarification that some people say that in the cave, there was a pigeon with a nest an egg inside and the cave was completely covered by a spider and the net of the spider this is all fabricated and this is not authentic and we should not mention or talk about it so this is just a note for you to know that the web of the spider and the pigeon and the nest and the eggs and all these things of the pigeon it is not authentic so don't mention it uh, to those that you are narrating to Coming back to the point now, this is the migration of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how we learn from it. We learn from it, a quick point. One, if you want to change your place, your house, your area, your permanence, your state, all the way to your country in order to practice your deen, in order to establish your deen, you have to do it. Yes, it starts with your room. If your room is not good, if your people around you, they are not good, if they are doing sins and if they are not you know, supporting you and if your, your Iman and your Ibadah is going down because of the people around you, change your room. If your apartment is not good, why? Because people around you next apartments, they are bad or they are affecting you, change your apartment. Uh, if your building is not good and you're not getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you are in a place that the masjid is not close by, any Islamic center is not close by, any Muslim you know, brothers community is not close, sisters community and center is not close and it is difficult for you to go and you have to drive for hours and hours and you know, travel in the train for hours in order to do that and you cannot do that, then change your building. If you cannot that, you know, and you want to practice your Islam, you want to establish your deen, change the area if you want to. Change the, you know, uh, provenance of, of yours. Change the state of yours. If not, then change the entire country for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will give you the success as he gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companion and the female companions and the tabi'een the success after the hijrah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you will do that, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to hold upon your deen, to, you know, protect your deen and to establish the deen properly, then inshallah ta'ala, you will be protected by Allah and you will be given success by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib, after that, what Abu Bakr did, as I said, he gave everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ even gave and the Sahaba gave. So again, if you want and for the sake of Allah, you want to give and sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do it. Don't say this is the saving of my life. Imagine Abu Bakr gave everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't even left a needle. You know a needle? He was searching for a needle. You know, he was he was leaving the house, leaving behind his, his, his uh, wife and his uh, family. And he was searching for something on a... On a uh, wall, you know, there's a wall, there's a uh, little wall, so he's putting his hand on top of the wall and searching for something. So 
the wife said, what you're looking for? So he said, I have, I, th I remember there was a needle, needle. There's a needle on top of it. So he is searching for it. He said, I want to even take this for the Rasulullah Sallallahu Imagine what this needle can do in Hijrah, what this needle can do in a migration, what this needle can do in front of the enemies, what this needle can do. But he does not want to leave anything at home and he wants to give everything for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, for the sake of Hijrah, for the sake of establishing Islam and establishing the deen. So this is it. Don't worry. Allah will give you. And this is what happened. Allah gave Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah gave Abu Bakr. Allah gave Umar. Allah gave all the companion. In fact, the treasure of Persian Empire, the treasure of the Roman Empire, it all came under the feet of the Sahaba. Isn't it? Isn't it? Why? Because they sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is about the hijrah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what we learn from the hijrah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also we should establish in ourselves that if you want to and, and apply in ourselves, if you want to really establish your deen and if there is difficulty, then migrate, migrate into a place that you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.